The wondrous collection of Mel Burncrant, delightful as it is, is serious business. It's not about Mickey Mouse. It's not about Disney. It's not about, hi kids. This is Americana, and this is great art. This is an art movement. Burncrant might be pleased to know a new generation is taking up his cause, magenta-haired and man-bunned as they are. For the uninitiated who walk into clutter, how do you describe this place? We're a gallery that shows designer toys, which are basically toys for adults. At the Clutter Gallery, toys are art. Co-owner, Josh Kimber. The really cool thing about Clutter is that we're an international brand. People buy our work from Paris to South Africa to China. We ship all over the world. Clutter Gallery shows work by a range of artists, sometimes collaborating on making limited editions as well. Josh and his wife, Miranda O'Brien, also host the annual Five Points Festival, an international gathering of toy artists and vendors. Clutter Gallery also displays the couple's personal collection of art toys. Do you have personal favorites? Every toy that's in our collection is there because we love it. It runs the gamut too, it's like monsters and cute. It's a somewhat familiar story here in the Northeast. The faded old red brick industrial town finding new life with the blossoming of a creative economy. But solving this mystery might require you to expand your horizons. And maybe your waistline. Our mystery main street is lined with bakeries and bistros, none more popular than kitchen sink food and drink, a tiny storefront eatery with a big following. The style of food we do here is very eclectic, and so it's really everything but the kitchen sink. Brian Arnoff is a local kid who has picked up awards for his innovative use of local ingredients, many of which come from his nearby farm. He never envisioned the town coming back the way it has. I didn't really spend any time on Main Street back then, but it wasn't a place that you really wanted to be. And now it's really transformed into a great walkable Main Street. You might want to head over to Zora Dora's for dessert. That's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Thanks. What we do here is we make artisanal popsicles. They're all made by hand, whether they're dairy or non-dairy. They're all fresh fruit. We use local dairy, local fruit when it's in season, even local vegetables when they're in season also. That's amazing. Kudos to you, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Lest you think Stephen Astorino and his gourmet artisanal popsicles are a Johnny-come-hipply to this newly gentrified town, think again. Zora Dora opened 13 years ago when much of the street was boarded up. Now we got all the yupsters from Brooklyn that came on up, and, and that's all right, too. Let's, we take anybody here. Over at the local hangout, Dogwood, the Breakneck Ridge Review is busting into high gear, and the rhythm guitarist might ring a bell for Bostonians. I had the great pleasure of being the director of the ICA for almost a decade, back in the old days. David Ross went on from Boston's Institute of Contemporary Art to lead the Whitney Museum in New York and the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. But he was ready to get out of the high-speed lane. Very quickly, I fell in love with this place. You know, there have only been maybe two communities I've ever lived in that I felt at home in. One was when we lived in Cambridge uh, and when I was working at the ICA. And, and then here. Ross was attracted by the area's wild beauty and surprisingly rich cultural scene. I'd kind of given up on the art world in many ways because I was getting a little cynical. And then up here, I met so many wonderful young artists that felt like re-energized. It didn't hurt that one of Ross's musical idols lived here. I got to meet him and fall under his sway. And then, of course, it was an opportunity for me to really pick up the musical side of my life and get serious about playing in a band. All right, everyone, the time for guessing is growing short. The clues are over time to make your call. All right, so let's go to the Facebook page one last time and see what everyone is thinking. Ren Sunny says Beacon, New York. 
Uh, Tony Orlandella also Beacon New York. Donna says Beacon New York, and do we win a free trip for being correct? Uh, no, Donna, you don't, but you have our everlasting admiration if you're right. And Terry says the castle is unmistakable. Hmm. Linda Nietzsche says fiscal New York. Rhonda Hinchy says Hudson Valley, New York. Jean DuPont says Mass Mocha, North Adams. And Richard Flanagan says Hudson River, New York. And I can say this, I have never been to this place. Hmm. Hmm. I have. I know, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> a final clue before we crack the mystery in the words of a local artist.